right. And it is recording. So for those of you who are going to watch the recording, here we are. Hello. <laughs> Great. Um, we could go ahead and start, I guess, because it looks to me like our first item of business, which is the minutes, we will not be able to approve. So I think we can probably skip past that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aviv, are you ready for the treasurer's report? Oh, no, the next one will take place in April. So you probably- Yeah, I didn't realize. It would have been a short treasurer's report. Because I didn't <laughs> yeah, okay. next in April, we'll do one Excellent. in April. Yes. Okay, then let's move on to the executive director's report. I do have a, um, a little update under treasurer's report. So uh, thanks to Ron, whose vote I just received, we now have received enough votes to pass the 2021 budget with all its suggestions. So everyone who vote, voted was um, Nancy Harry, Aviv, Lynette, Nancy Osonio, and Ron. So that's five votes. So that's mm -hmm. enough to make it pass. So that's exciting. And we can just wanted to make sure that this is part of the record and I'll put it in the minutes and stuff. Excellent. And then I guess we could move on to your report, Julia. We start, oh, oh, Courtney is joining us. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Oh, Courtney, we need a little update on how things Yes. Yeah, she sent me an update this morning saying things were doing a little better, but I'm sure she can tell us more now. Yeah. Oh, I'm eager to hear. Hi, Courtney. Uh, she's muted. She's she muted. Courtney, I'm hoping you could unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about what life is like in Austin these days. <laughs> yes. <Hi>. Oh. <laughs> Good to see you you is it warming up yeah it's like 70 degrees right now it can never happen <laughs> but it did yeah we just got our, our water back today so i had my first shower i was like i'm showering before the meet <laughs> <laughs> just to be ready <laughs> Well, that's good to know because yeah. Julia shared with me, I think, a, a, a photo you had sent her where you were um, boiling snow, as I recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was crazy. So if you don't have a survival kit, I highly recommend getting one. <laughs> wow. Lots of water. Um, you have one which plate, but yeah. It's just things like I don't think if it ever if it all shut down mm. toilets and all um, that. Courtney, your audio, at least for me, your audio is just a little hard to hear. Um, is anyone else feeling that way? Oh, I I barely understand it. Yeah, so we're really <laughs> glad you're here. And um, I really yeah. oh. if you have something something else you want to share, maybe you can put it in chat. And sometimes what will happen too is she calls in on her phone. She can still see video, but on her, but you can hear her voice on her phone. I have to do that quite often as well. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, Hillary. Uh, Hillary. Everyone can see in chat what Hillary has entered. Yeah. Everyone can see. Oh, that explains the internet. It's probably the audio. Maybe the cable is frozen solid. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, um, um, thank you for all that information. And I wonder now if we can continue with the executive director's report. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Do you want me to share my screen and pull it up? Sure. Okay. We have it. Right here. Okay, here we are. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, we can. Okay, so I am working right now uh, with our grant writers. Oh, Andrea is joining us. Yay! We can actually go back to the minutes in a second. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that first, or do you want me to go through my report first? Whatever you want, Julia. Um. Maybe let's do the minutes first, so that way we have it in case, you know, somebody has to leave. Sounds good. Okay, then I'll stop sharing this right now. There she is, but I can, um, I can pull up the minutes if you want me to and share those. Sounds good. 
Seeing everybody, yeah. there, you go. there she is. Hello, hi, good to see you, Courtney. I was wondering if you would have power. <laughs> no, we just got a little report from her. Okay, she just got water back today. Congratulations! Oh, my goodness. So I've pulled up the minutes here if you don't have them in your um, packet, if you don't have them handy. And I am happy to scroll up for you whenever you tell me to. Yeah, I think maybe we could scroll a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let me know when to scroll. I think maybe we could scroll Let's a little scroll. more unless there's someone who wants to leave that as it yeah, is. Scroll. Was there supposed to be a D on the previous page? We just run out of time or? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that. I'm assuming that, OK. Um, I might have started, you know, it, it just kind of like does this auto detect thing. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So okay. and well, oftentimes what I'll do is I will actually type the new minutes into last month's minutes. So if there was a D, I might have forgotten to actually right. delete it. So my, my apologies. I can take the D oh. out. Okay. And I think maybe we're ready to scroll down. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. to the top of that page. We're, we'll still approve the minutes regardless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think maybe I could see a little more of the librarians. Yeah, yeah. me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little more? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we could scroll I'm a little good. bit more. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there we are. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion. To Is there a the second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion of the minutes? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? I think we just approved the minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did okay. I get it right? The second vote was wrong. Uh, is that correct? I heard Aviv and then I couldn't quite hear who the second person was. Either yeah. or, either or. Yeah, it, was, no, it wasn't me. Aviv it wasn't you. Then I didn't hear who approved this, the, who also, I heard Aviv, but I didn't hear the second person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ron, I, I think you were the second, no? No, because I wasn't in attendance at the meeting, so I That's shouldn't. right, so he can't approve yeah, it. Yeah, I, I didn't attend I, and I wasn't there either. Oh, well then I misunderstood. Um, I wonder if in a situation like that, let's see, is it who else? Is there, can I second it or not? You can second it. Mm -hmm. Why don't I second it? And then is there any discussion of the minutes? 
we did say, of course, that that little D was coming out. I don't think we yes. have to put that in the motion. Okay, so let's try voting again. All in favor, <laughs> say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, the minutes have been approved. Let's return to the executive director's report. All right. Thank you. I'm glad I asked because I wasn't quite sure. I thought I heard a second vote, but you know, want to make sure that it's reflected properly in the minutes. I will share my screen again with the report. Here we go. And I'm still big in the throes. Uh, can you all see? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Grand season is still in full swing. Um, and so that's what's taking up a lot of my time right now. We are working on the um, grant application for the Community Foundation, which I really, really want to make sure that we get approved this year because we didn't last year. Um, and then Barnett Siegel Trust is a smaller one that we, um, you know, hopefully we'll get again this year. And then I have really good news. Um, we were approved for the COVID relief grant that the state of California oh, okay. puts out. Oh, who's so, oh, wow. so, that's a really great one because um, I know that lots and lots and lots of organizations applied and I remember sitting there and, and the site just crashed all the time. Oh, cool. So, uh, <laughs> We didn't wow. get it in the first round, but we were approved now in the second oh. round. Do you know uh, what the award amount was? Yes, it's $15,000. So wow. that's for our size organization. So that's really, really helpful. And in addition to that, we did receive um, the second round of PPP loans. That's 18100 So that's already approved. And I'm working on the loan forgiveness forgiveness for the first round. So that's in the process so that it gets converted into a grant and we don't have to repay it. Wow, did we already get the- uh, Yep, uh, yep, the I'm on it. Second PPP <laughs> loan, that was quick. Yes, wow. yes. I already got the second round. It's already in oh. the bank too. Oh, congratulations. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, good work. Thank you. Yeah, the COVID relief grant is not yet in the bank, but I did receive the email saying, here are the paperwork thingies and sign here and docu sign that. And so I've done all of that stuff. And I'm hoping, you know, I'm sure they have just a ton of organizations to get through. Um, they've told me we'll get the money. So I'm going to, I'm going to believe them. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, and we are, as Andrea knows, uh, the <laughs> semester at CSUMB has started again and we are in the throes. I am working with two professors this semester. Um, I have again um, students from the, um, what's it called, the tech class. Um, uh, yeah. CST. I think so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cassandra. Students from that class and I've already talked to each of them and signed them up with the project. And uh, this semester, it's actually gotten already so much smoother, the process. All the students were ready to uh, reach out to me. I had individual meetings with them. I had already pre-planned uh, what to um, give them. So each of them is working on, on these explainer videos again to make sure that our library resources um, are explained to, to people who might not have the same level tech skills. So it'll show, this is the website, this is where you go to find this particular resource, this is where you get a library card, this is what you can do with this particular oh, cool. tool. And this time we have two fluent Spanish speakers. And so they are going to go ahead and um, start making these videos in Spanish. And I'm gonna have them actually translate some of the ones that we already have. So I'm really, <laughs> really excited about that. And the second professor is, um, I think it's uh, so, social, social writing, social topics, something like that. And I have another three students from there. So right now I'm up to seven students. And these students will be working with their professor to set up um, creative writing workshops that then will be available for the um, library branches um, to uh, sort of share so the students will also create the um the sort of advertising that can then go out in the baggies to let people know so that they can sign up for the class and then the students will actually teach the class so that you can do a little creative writing oh, um, and i don't know yet what levels they're going to be targeting in terms of library patrons i don't know if it's going to be for youth or for adults or for a mixture mm -hmm. or you know several different ones but i think this is going to be really cool i'm hoping that they're going to do one um for you know 
my my 10 year old here like a um you know storytelling <laughs> sort of a comic yeah creative writing workshop we'll see but I think this is going to yeah. be a really cool one too have you put that out there in terms of that's a potential need like 10 year olds because there might be students who are like open to you know um I am trying to no, this is just my me personally I'm mm -hmm. trying to make sure that it is you know fully going in the meeting the library's needs and not just yeah. my personal needs. So um, <laughs> if they decide that they see this need as well, then maybe there will be one that's offered. Um, but mm -hmm. it really depends on where we have more patrons that, that have. I see. Great. So I don't want to put myself first, um, mm -hmm. you know, with that kind of stuff. I try to be the in-between person, actually, with this particular project between right. our library management, specifically B that I'm working with, and then, um, you know, getting right. the information back to the professor and the students. And so right. then whatever they come up with, that's what's going to be offered. Okay. Oh, I think I misunderstood because I, <laughs> oh, I thought you were leaving it open to the students. And that's why I was like, oh, it's okay to say working with 10 year olds with doing. So I might, I might I ask B yeah. if she thinks, uh, you know, that might be a cool idea. And if she says yes, then I might, then I might keep bringing this idea up but if she says no I don't think this is something our library patrons would be interested in then absolutely not yeah right yeah Great. well so. okay well thanks again for working sure. with service <laughs> learners yeah I just didn't want to come across as you know me setting up my own programming here so yeah. Hillary I hope you understand <laughs> that right <laughs> it seems like such a win-win this collaboration that the foundation mm -hmm. is having with CSUMB yeah. Oh, and so far, I mean, last semester was already going pretty smoothly, I want to say. For us, it's actually been better to have these virtual projects. It and really that can continue. continue. Um, yeah, that can continue. I mean, we just had our latest town hall, and we're not going back until August 1st, and that's very iffy, and it's only going to be a partial opening. And so I say all that to say, not to go off topic, but... Um, remote offerings are going to be a thing of the, they're a thing of the present and a thing of the future. And for organizations where that works out the best, that's great. And we know other partners that are like, we can't wait for you to come back on, for, you know. For Perfect. That's good yeah. to hear. Yeah, I can think of tons of projects that can be done this way. So it, it makes it a lot easier also because, you know, the foundation, the physical space that I have to offer for a student to complete work is very small. Right. You know, and especially now, I don't know how soon I'm going to feel ready to have a student come into that space. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this, this is actually working out really well. I think that's going to be the same for library projects where mm -hmm. we're going to have the service learners who need to come in to do stuff. Like we want mm -hmm. you to physically, but if it's a matter of, can you, research or help us develop a plan mm -hmm. you know but you and then if the person quite frankly if we can be very if they're working out of their own home and they then they don't have to match the hours well who has a key right. you can't come before 8 a.m because nobody yeah. else is there mm -hmm. you know and we can be more flexible for the student as well so yeah yeah cool great so yeah that's been working really well and i'm really looking forward to seeing this um, semester's projects then once they really start rolling especially the Spanish language ones because I think mm -hmm. that's that's a big need that we're going to be able to fill with these explainer videos so and then uh, the other thing that I've been working on remember at the last board meeting we took our little picture so this is the card that you see that uh, Courtney then made for us and <laughs> working on making all these thank you cards. I don't know if you've received oh, them I yet. Guess. Yeah. But um, so that's been keeping me quite busy this week. Um, so that's going out. Now I do have a somewhat uncomfortable topic that we kind of need to talk about. And that is our auditor. So, <laughs> and Aviv has been hearing me gripe. Um, I am not too happy with Hayashi and Wayland. Um, their cost has just been going up and up, but unfortunately, the level of service has not stayed the same. It has gone down. And mm -hmm. even though we brought this up with them last, the last time around, not this year, but last year, 
um, because literally, I mean, it was like <laughs> hours before the deadline, poor Aviv had to leave his office to go over to Hayashi to sign the return, to pick up the documents. And it's just been, <sighs> I mean, the bare minimum. And, and yeah, I know that they are the go-to firm in the area who does all the audits for nonprofits. And so there's some really big nonprofits that get their audits done by them. And we're not a big nonprofit, and they certainly make sure we know that we're not a big nonprofit. And um, I'm not trying to, you know, do anything un unthoughtful or or unprofessional, but I, I just wanted to kind of bring this up because it's been an issue. And it's even though we talk to them, it doesn't seem to be something that they are concerned about. Um, and I just wanted to see if maybe we, Aviv suggested we might be able to put out an RFP to see if we can attract maybe some different bids and see if we can. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we could and uh, send it out to bid. Um, the other thing is just to see if we have a fixed contract with them. So a lot of times with these audits, you get a, you get a two, two or three year contract. Um, where it's a fixed price so at least it's predictable and we can incorporate that into our budget at least we know what we're getting ourselves into and it's it's uh, we can forecast out but if if it is now just a function of just the hours spent and then we may need to go back and and see uh and at the very least if we if we do the rfp you know and and they come back to the bargaining table maybe we can get back into a fixed contract with them um, and have them take a look at that again. Now, again, there are only four or five, you know, players in town, you know, that yeah. do this sort of thing. So our, if we're going to keep it in, in this area, you know, our choices, our choices are going to be limited. You know, we're only looking at a handful of CPA firms that do this sort of thing, but mm -hmm. we can, we can always shop around. The question is, you know, how do you shop around in the middle of a pandemic? We may need to, uh, mm -hmm defer this until next year or we could do it virtually well has anyone talked to the community foundation about a list of auditors no i th that was not an idea i had um so far so thank you I'll, i'm happy to reach out and find out what what auditors they recommend The, the other, the other, uh, I guess the other consideration would be uh, that, you know, since Hayashi has been doing this for years and years and years, and they've got it pretty much, you know, dialed in, mm -hmm. that if we do go with a new auditor, we can expect some, you know, a learning curve the first couple of years. And not only that, but um, they, the, uh, Hayashi has been been tracking our endowment funds on a separate spreadsheet for years we would but i'm assuming if we get new auditors they would communicate with the old auditors i, I don't know how much information they can get as far as uh, beginning balances and the details but that would also be a consideration because of our endowment funds and how that's been tracked over over the countless years mm -hmm. uh but i think that's a minor consideration it's really just you know efficiencies timeliness, and of course, cost. Um, is the same, <clears throat> excuse me, Julia, have you been working with the same auditor? Yes, same so individual? our supervising auditor, and, and Aviv, correct me if I get the terms wrong, is, is um, Mike Nolan. Yes. And then my go-to person who was <clears throat> under his supervision is Karina Ramos. And I have been working with her since I started in this position. So she's been um, my sort of like direct contact for the last four, now five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I think her title has changed. I think she has risen through the ranks. There's now an additional person that started working with her last year. Um, a male by the name of Adrian Zavala, I want to say. Um, but Karina and, and Mike have been the two uh, steady forces. And then um, the times that we've had meetings, they've also brought in someone by the name of, oh, what's her Ray name? Goularte. There right. we go, Ray Goularte. Yeah, she, and, mm -hmm. and she heads up the 990. So Mike Nolan is, I, I think, more of the, on the audit side. You know, he'll head up the the, uh, the audits, et cetera. And he's, um, he is the, um, 
he, he's the permanent fixture. You know, you, the, you might have some uh, turnover underneath him, but, you know, you can always count Mike Nolan being there. Uh, and same can be said for Ray Galarte. She, she's more of the, the tax side. So she handles our 990s and, and uh, coordinates and et cetera. So, so those are the two permanent, you know, stable pieces there at Hayashi is um, uh, Mike and, and Ray. Uh, and then, of course, underneath them, people come and, you know, people go. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. Mm. Is, there, is there any particular person that's been lacking in responsiveness? It's just the overall timing is just so late. Right. And, you know, they, uh, in their defense, you know, yet yeah, it's been a pandemic and it's been a heck of a year. And, uh, you know, they, they did experience lots of turnover the last couple of years. Uh, but still, this has been a recurring um, issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're willing to cut them some slack, but, you know, every Absolutely. year it seems like um, we're, we're down down to the wire i i, I mean I, I i guess it wouldn't hurt to see what else is out there at some point um i wouldn't necessarily say we're going to go somewhere else but it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to just take a look see see what else is out there right um yeah okay take a look see i like that <laughs> no i mean yeah, things have changed and it, and there are firms in san jose let's face it we're it's a virtual world out there, and um, we could broaden our horizon and look at um, at some CPA firms in San Jose where we would have more choices than here locally. And a lot of it can be conducted um, uh, online, or um, you know, there are remote offerings, you know, uh, across the board wherever you go. So that that would also be a a possibility and if we go to a big city like san jose a because of economies of scale we may be able to bring down the cost a little bit uh but b you may give up a little bit of service you know if you're doing a high volume you're going to a firm that does high volume but then that's hayashi anyway you know high volume so mm -hmm. um we're right back where we started i don't know hayashi does have a good reputation and Absolutely. they're very good at what they do uh i'm, I'm not i'm not uh i'm not uh I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, making any disparaging remarks. It's just that um, we also have to do what's best for our organization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it, it and and, t and and they're used to it. You know, typically any firm would would reassess every two three years when their contract is up, and that's why I'm asking. You know, if we can find out when our contract is up, and, and maybe make sure more to economical to go into a three-year contract with them. Because typically, if you go into a long-term contract with an audit firm, you may be able to negotiate a little bit as far as the price, and they could throw in the 990s and everything, and it's all built in, in one price. Okay. I can certainly make sure that I look at, um, or pull up the last, or the initial communication that was sent to me to do the audit for last year. So that's the 2019 audit to see if that was um, part of a contract. I think you said that that was uh, described in the engagement letter. Right, Aviv? Well, I, I think a few years back, we did have a contract. We had a three year, yeah. but that was years and years ago. A lot has happened since then. I don't know if whether we renewed our contract or whether going forward, it was just once the, it's, it's like when you have a one year uh, lease you know, when the one year is leave, then you go month to month, right? So we be, be we may be going our we may be going hourly, you know, on on these audits uh, mm -hmm. since a few years back. I, I don't know how that works with Hayashi. Um, should I? Uh, because they've already contacted me for next year, which is why I wanted to make sure that I bring it up in um, you know this particular board meeting. Um, should I just uh, request? From them to to show me of what terms of uh, terms we are currently under with them. Yeah, I mean, I would ask them. Uh, you know, do we have a contract? They can send you. Uh, uh, and, and plus, you know, we probably want to go. I mean, my my opinion is my recommendation, if I may, is you, we probably want to go one more year. And 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 behind the scenes, you know, we we can start looking elsewhere but the show must go on you know we because we definitely we desperately need yeah. the, the audit 
for our grants, et cetera. We, we don't want that to be held up. So, you know, we go, we probably go another year, but in the meantime, we may want to reevaluate, reassess, but it would be good to know um, if we're under contract with them or maybe we mm -hmm. can even renegotiate. We're a nonprofit, you know, maybe they can give us a little bit of a discount, who knows? To me, that sounds like a really good idea to very carefully start looking and, and just reassessing. And the assessment might come out with the fact that, yes, we want to stay with Hayashi and Wayland. So I'm not advocating that we need to leave them right now. It's just something that I've noticed that, you know, for the price that we pay, I feel like, um, you know, the, the timeliness of service could, could definitely be a little better, especially after we've noted it last year when we didn't have a pandemic, that that was an issue. Um, but yes, I'm also absolutely willing to cut them a little bit of slack. This has been a crazy year and we're still not out of it. Um, I just thought that we should have a conversation about it. Keep in mind that Ayashi, uh, as the auditors, they'll be reading these minutes. <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> That's part of the audit process. I don't know if you can yes. check that from the records, but, that, it, but you know, it's, it's good to put them on notice as well. Right. I mean, they can know that we want to um, reevaluate their services. Right. As you said, <laughs> that's a normal process of a well run organization. It is. It really is. You reevaluate your costs on a regular yeah. basis, right? So, yes. Okay, that was that concludes my uh, board report at this point. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to let me know. Good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Julia. Any questions for Julia? Okay, let's move on to the um, librarian's report. Okay, so I only have a couple of things to add. Um, I had put at the bottom about um, day in the district and what day in the district is in brief is just one of our advocacy opportunities. We focus on our state representatives and it's called day, it, the name day in the district was when you would go visit them and it would always be on a Friday because that would be the day they weren't in Sacramento. They were in their district. So this year, it doesn't really much matter where they are. And I don't think we're going to be all jamming into their offices this spring anyway. So <laughs> this, this could end, if this is a Zoom meeting, they could Zoom from Sacramento or it doesn't matter. Quite often, you end up meeting with their staff and that's okay. That's actually sometimes better because their staff is going to sometimes know the ins and outs and the details better than the legislator does. And you need the staff person to bring something to the legislator's attention. Mm -hmm. if, if we cover all, if we cover the whole county, we have, we would have four legislators to visit, two in the assembly and two in the Senate. Um, Chris Amaral is doing the lead on organizing the visits this year with the California Library Association equips us with the talking points, which I, I believe I attached to the mm -hmm. agenda. We, our job then is to make this very real for their district to say, here's the high level, but here's, here's what this looks like for constituents, your constituents in your district, and then bring them any um, local priorities or examples. So. Uh, bringing to the state, here's an example of how high-speed broadband has served your constituents in your district. Therefore, we need you to support this piece of legislation, this arm of funding. Uh, we definitely have highlights to hit. I mean, lunch at the library alone, we've just got over 20,000 meals handed out to students, um, you know, and zip books as our, you know, we. I, we can do, we can put all the numbers and the stories and the pictures together. What I need is interest in participation. And uh, Chris estimates it's going to be a total of six to seven hours of your time doing the research. And then we'll have a rehearsal. Since this is on Zoom, we'll need to figure out we're, we're presuming it's going to be on Zoom. We're presuming none of the local offices are going to say, okay, five of you come visit us. You know, we're presuming it's going to be on Zoom. Um, we would do a rehearsal, including um, who starts first. If we're only going to say two things, which two things are they going to be and who's going to say them? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would have the appointment with the legislator. So my job 
right now is simply to collect interest, which I'll, I would then pass on to Chris Amaral. And then as we find, as we schedule the visit, she would reach out and say, okay, I have a visit with John Laird's office. It is scheduled mm -hmm. for, you know, this day, this mm -hmm. time, who is available. And then we'd set up rehearsals. The, the goal is to do this in the month of March because of timing for the budget. The governor's budget has been released. The legislator is working. There's still time to influence the May revise. If you do it too much later, the May revise has been written and they're like, yeah, 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 talk to us next year. So, so your goal is to get in that sweet spot of state budget development when everything's actually happening and you have time to have influence. So I did not have the full schedule to bring to you at this meeting, but I knew the March meeting would be too late to. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So I already um, saw a little message from Kelly saying that she might be interested in joining you in this particular endeavor. Cool. Yeah, it's great. It's actually really fun to do, you guys. It's not scary or hard at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and we rehearse and sometimes your, your role is to speak as the constituent in your district or to speak from your position of expertise mm -hmm. and then somebody else comes on the library side and goes mm -hmm. and let me tell you how your libraries serve that need you know mm -hmm. so um and, and on zoom it's different but it's still not difficult but I'm it sounds like too. early march oh uh, it's whenever we can get them sometimes there's a struggle to schedule Okay. So our, our, the aim is just to have it happen sometime in the month of March. March. Okay. Yeah, I'm interested. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I, so am I. Okay. You're picking everybody up. <laughs> I mean, I'm I have one week in March that's really bad, but, you know, so, you know. Well, we would, we would reach out, and if you said, oh, I, oh, I can't do that day, then okay, that's great. okay. And there's, and there's going to be four of them to do. So oh, you, may, okay. you, you may end up saying, well, that's where I live, but I can't do that one. But, oh, I could go. To, or you may be able to do your assembly person, but not your senator, and that's okay. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. That's exciting. I'm just going to jump in and say that Ron posed a good question in chat, which was, should we take the action items before Andrea leaves at 1 p.m. and possibly Kelly? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely go ahead. The rest of my report can totally wait. So let's idea. Um, Julia, what are those action items? Um, we actually just have one action item that mm -hmm. I need a vote on. And then I can just quickly say, you know that I've been mm -hmm. working on this little video. Mm -hmm. I've already met with Nancy. Thank you very much. I've already actually met with uh, Jackie Bleich from the libraries. She let me inside the library. So that was really fun. <laughs> and I filmed her there. Um, and I'm um, scheduled to meet Ron tomorrow uh, at 1.30. And uh, Kelly and Andrea said that they were interested as well. Um, just wanted to make sure that it's all right. I'll send you an email and see which times will, will work. Um, okay. And I'll drive out to Greenfield. And Andrea, I was hoping to meet with you in Seaside. Right, I think that's OK. Yep, not a problem. OK. So the big item that I need your vote on, we need to make a decision, yay or nay, is words and wine. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. We can't like kick that down the road a little longer. Okay. <laughs> well, the problem is if we don't really make a decision, the time mm -hmm. is going to run away from us, right? So, yeah. um, we can certainly do nothing again this year, but it's not going to help us a with our outreach and b with our financial situation. Um, so I definitely would like for you to think about that. I know that we all prefer an in-person event. That's mm -hmm. just what our constituents seem to prefer as well, the people who like to come to our Words and Wine event. Um, I was hoping that I might get you interested in the idea of basically having a virtual setup that we could then expand to then have small amounts of people join us in the meeting rooms of the libraries nearest to their homes. Mm -hmm. Or if they just wanted mm -hmm. to, if they wanted to have a little bit of, of, of community feel, 
um, so that that way it, it is not just on the computer, mm -hmm. but it could be sort of like a group viewing, you know, right. mask on and 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 socially distanced, and you know, window opened at regular times and all that good stuff. Right. Because um, um, we're talking about October or earlier. I can't remember. Sorry, uh, October at the earliest. Yeah, Probably. I like the yeah yeah I like the idea of a hybrid kind of thing. I do too. In Hillary. Does that sound feasible with the libraries as far as their community rooms? Depending on how many, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I know I right now, if it was summer, I'd say don't count on it. I think mm -hmm. fall, fall, we may end up back there that, that we could say you could have one in King City, you could have one in Greenfield, you could have one in Marina, you know, that might be kind of mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Or even if we if we can, um, you know, <laughs> identify two parking lots where we could, I mean, are we going to have one of these bookmobiles that has an outside screen, then we could set up chairs outside and, mm -hmm. you know, have the <laughs> try. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. We could do an outdoor portable screen and projector without the bookmobile, too. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, that could come separately to a mm -hmm. parking lot or a park for sure mm -hmm. okay well because then if we if we know that we're going to have an event then courtney and i can start this machinery of moving forward because it will right you know be a lot more difficult for us to uh, probably attract sponsors mm -hmm. for the event to just kind of start reaching out to people letting them know hey we're having this would you even be interested? We could even start out with just, you know, we're thinking about doing an event that could possibly be turned into a hybrid event. Would mm -hmm. you be interested? Yes or no? Just the one question mm -hmm. and see what sort of information we get back. So it mm -hmm. sounds like the question you need an answer to right now is, does the board want to move forward with the planning of this 2021 event mm -hmm. in the fall? And I'm wondering if someone would put that in the form of a motion we can discuss. I what would be the timing? Do we know the let's, timing? Let's see if we can get to that in the discussion. Oh, I see. Yeah. So could we have a motion? Yeah, I move that the board moves forward in invest in looking at the possibility of holding a 2021 words and wine. Second the motion. I, uh, and Kelly said, okay. Now, yeah. Viv, yeah, your concerns. Oh, um it, it seems um it's it's just finding that sweet spot because if we have it too early on we may not even have the hybrid it would be a virtual mm -hmm. uh, a virtual gathering whereas if we wait we don't want to wait too late because we, now you got the holidays again so if we open this up in october we wait till november now we're in thanksgiving and Christmas. so it's finding you know somewhere where people are vaccinated and they're rolling out the vaccines people feel more comfortable getting out there and and, and like i said the hybrid may work you know you get people participating we can limit the number of people in in a limited space so uh but a hybrid would be, a, I think, a lot more interactive than just a, a purely virtual remote right. type setting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the it's again, it's the, the sands keep shifting, so it's it's hard to predict when would be the most optimal, ideal time to do this. So it's you know we just go with it. We just take a stab and we just. We just because once we're locked in, we're locked in, right? I mean, once we send out our ads, we we publicize, we market, our date is locked in. It's not like you can change it. So, you know, once we think long and hard about the date that we want and we commit to it, that's it. We go in charging and that's that's our date. So uh, and so we well I'm trying to say we need to give some thought to the actual date. The date is I think critical. It's mm -hmm. can't be too early and it can't be too late. It's somewhere right. in and as I'm understanding it, we're talking about something that might end up being exclusively virtual or virtual and uh, with people in, in these actual mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm, it seems to me the motion on the floor is that, that it could go in either direction. Is that what you're understanding? Mm -hmm. Yes, the motion was simply to begin planning. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. With the idea of holding it probably in the fall, late yeah. fall. Right, yeah. right. Okay, I mean, a couple of things. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, Julia. 
the couple things that um, at least I have understood so far throughout this entire course is, um, uh, course meaning that the course of the pandemic, um, it seems to be safer to be outside. Mm -hmm. So if we're thinking about, um, I just keep you know having this idea if, if, if our uh, hybrid component is then specifically something where we can have the program be viewed but outside, mm -hmm. um, then the possibility of making that happen becomes greater. So the second that we, we put a full roof and walls with it, <laughs> um, we have to be a lot more careful. Mm -hmm. So if, I mean, the idea that we had before of, of just, uh, you know, um, the, the Monterey frowns was, was right. a good idea, but the cost mm -hmm. was, you know, quite mm -hmm. up there unless we were doing this movie thing. Mm -hmm. the, the second we wanted to do our own program, it, it became a lot more expensive, unfortunately. Um, but it the seems, thought... It seems to me we're talking now about potentially lowering that cost because we may be able to use some parking lots that we have, right? That are library parking lots. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. so if we can, I mean, you know, we could. I thought that was what Hillary was uh, suggesting. I mean, she didn't say yeah. we can, but she said we might. Well, I, it, for meeting rooms, if we're allowed to and we stay under capacity, I, we have control over those. We don't always have control over our parking lots. Most of our leased parking lots are not actually ours. Mm. Like, like I, I can control the marina meeting room. I can't control the marina parking lot. Who controls but the I, parking? That's the city of Marina. Okay. But so, I, I thought the focus, though, of this vote was just to secure and make the decision that you and forward, Courtney yeah. could move forward and look into starting Absolutely. with yeah. going back with the idea that you said of even reaching out to potential donors to see yeah. if they're interested, which means framing it so that they're clear that, you know, our hope would be a hybrid that <laughs> might include outdoors. But because none of us knows what's gonna happen with new strains and vaccines. I mean, I think we really have to, um, you know, when asking our donors if they're interested and in making it clear about like, would you be interested in an all virtual or, you know, if everything works out hybrid event outdoors, but not minimize the fact that it may well be all virtual for reasons that we have no, that are beyond everyone's control. I, 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 w I would throw one other thing but before we move on and mm -hmm. and um, there's one other variable if mm -hmm. we're going to do this outside and that is the weather. Yes. And yeah. So we may be hostage to the weather. So if we're pushing it to October, for example, that may be when the rainy right. season starts, whereas September, in other words, if we have an outdoor venue in mind, September may be a better choice than say October or November. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the venue we pick. And so we we want to consider, yeah, the vaccine that's unpredictable. Weather is unpredictable. So we just want to try to um, have s as much control as we possibly can, and then of course have a contingency plan. So if it pours that day, do we have a backup plan? We can all huddle inside of right. uh, the library somewhere or uh, a closed <laughs> uh, a roof yeah, during a pandemic, so all, which is. <laughs> During a pandemic, which is why we just want to know, yeah, are they, exactly. because if they so were to say, to the numbers. yeah, if they were to say, if it's all virtual, count me out, I'd rather write you a check, then that's good information. That's what we really want. Yes. Exactly. People are exactly. really are thinking, you know what, I'd love to, as long as it's not on Zoom, then, then that gives us. Yeah. Yeah, what we're, are you folks what ready we're... to vote on this motion? Yes. Okay. Um, all in favor. Say aye. 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 Yeah. All opposed. Okay, I believe we've passed the motion yes. to um, go forward with the planning for this event. Great. So I think the first step that Courtney and I are going to do is to brainstorm how we can phrase this one question to mm -hmm. send out to then all of our constituents, specifically to our regular words and wine attendees mm -hmm. to see what feedback we get well, and you know if you want to run a draft by the board just you know just to get yeah. in um that sounds fine and you know maybe we can help you if, if that's what you're looking for great yeah great. yeah i'd okay. love that 
Great. So um, I think if that's the agenda item we needed to take care of, then I would go back and ask Hillary if she has any more she'd like to share with us. Um, the only other updates, and this is really just if you're trying to get in touch with people in the libraries, is we now have more staff going to be disaster service workers. And sometimes those assignments, many times those assignments are full times for 30, 60 or 90 days. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to reach out to a branch, what I would do is also reach out to a senior manager or to me. So for example, Christopher Gallegos is on disaster service work assignment. So um, if you included Chris Amaral, she would get your request to anything related to Gonzalez. Uh, Don Vest is gonna start an assignment at the end of March. She'll be on full-time disaster service work for 90 days. Um, so that's happening. Just if you're used to, I work with so-and-so when it relates to thus and such, is just always copy a senior manager or me. That way I'll know, oh, that person's not going to reply. I need to send this over to this oh, other person and take care of it you. for you. Um, we are also working hard to try to open three branches for computer use by appointment. And this is going to oh, be our wow. first bringing people back inside. It's going to take a bunch of approvals. I'm, you know, meeting with our reopening team tomorrow to finalize the, the service plans, which have to go to the safety officer and the risk officer and the CAO and the health department and, and everybody. Um, but that really is the thing we cannot bring outside that when you need it, you need it. You need a computer with internet, you know, to do your taxes or um, even, you know, make a vaccine appointment. They, you can call 211, but they really, it's a last resort if you cannot go online and do it yourself. So um, we're aiming there for our next service we're going to add, and it would only be like one North County branch, one Peninsula branch, and one South County branch, because we need the, and we picked the branches that were physically the most ready, the, the best set up to try to pilot it there and then roll it out further. And that's it for updates to my report, unless you guys have any questions about I anything. I wondering if you could share the branches, or did you just want to leave it at one? In North? I'm going to leave it at three yeah. because it, we're... We're a little wonky on one of them and it may hop to another. Oh, so thanks. That, that's very mm -hmm. <laughs> but our goal is geographic representation. And then if if we cannot help you outside, you don't have a device, you it has to be done on a computer, you need a full size keyboard, then we can say, okay, you may make an appointment at one of these three branches and use a full size computer in our library, full size keyboard, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed. Okay, no, that sounds great. Thank you, Hillary. Um, so if we go to the committees, we've already taken our vote on words and wine. So I think that brings us to old business and that brings us to new board members, Julia. Yes, um, so I finally did uh, hear back from Linda. I was able to speak with her and uh, she is still considering is not is it might be interested um but she's kind of slow in her decision making process and i don't want to push that too far but it brought me to the idea of bringing this back to the board and see if we could maybe brainstorm together of potential board members or, or committee members people that you think might be um, that you know are passionate about books and libraries that we might be able to kind of bring into our circle So are you asking for that right now or you're telling us that you want us to think about it? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> ideally, I would love for you to throw names at me and ideas on how we can move forward, but I understand that that's probably not possible. So if I can just kind of like put that little thing in your brain to kind of have percolate. So whenever you uh, talk to colleagues and friends and uh, community members and, and you hear some hear someone who seems to be really passionate about you know oh, i've got these books and this all this good stuff um then maybe uh, to just put the two and two together and, and maybe see if, if if there might be an, an interest in uh, actual board service that sounds great and i would suggest that you put it in email so that the folks who aren't here know that um we're also hoping that they will come up with some names okay. that sounds yeah. really good uh let's see um 
another video. I think you've talked a little bit yep. about that, but uh, do you want to say anything more about it? Um, I certainly can. So I now have uh, two little videos, one from Nancy already and one from Jackie Bleich. So the idea that I have behind it is um, to, and, and Jackie has actually uh, said that she's going to be uh, my little liaison with that. So I'm really excited about that. Um, since she knows so many people in the county and we have a fairly large list of uh, county employees who give through their um, what is it, paycheck deduction um, on a monthly basis. And um, what I am envisioning with this particular video is to uh, try and see if we can get as, as, as many people from diverse sectors working within the county as possible to kind of showcase um, how important the libraries are for, for, for all of us, right? So we have some people who uh, donate to us who work in the health department. We have people who work at Natividad. And so they all might have different reasons on why they support our libraries on a monthly basis. And I'm just trying to see if we can find a way how to pull that out a little bit more. Um, you know, someone who works for probation might might have to say, um, or would want to say, okay, I uh, you know, see the link between people being able to read and, and then not ending up in, in, in jail. So, um, you know, th those are the kind of things that I'm hoping we'll be able to tease out of uh, our interviewees. Sounds like a good project. Any other <laughs> questions or comments about the video? Okay, then let's move. Uh, move on to foundation investments, Julia. Sure. Um, this is another one that I just kind of wanted to bring up. Um, and this was an idea that we had uh, before the, the pandemic hit to have uh, Richard Soros from Merrill Lynch, who handles most of our investments, come and just kind of give us an overview um, of how our investments are, you know, looking, what is Merrill Lynch doing with them, because, um, you know, hopefully we can we can get a little bit more hands on with uh, with that particular subject and making sure that our investments are moving forward so that we can bring more monies to the libraries as they need them. So just to kind of know what what they've been doing for us, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess, is well, my thought. One possibility is uh, maybe we send him. Um, Richard, an invite to one of our Zoom meetings. And yeah, would you be? I okay mean, I, we're in this for the long haul. I, you know, I, I don't anticipate us meeting personally for quite some time. And I'm sure I, I can't speak for Richard, but I'm assuming he's done a, a, you know, he's probably got a few Zoom meetings under his belt by now, and maybe he could come in and give us the whole, you know, presentation, um, dog and pony show. Uh, I mean, we, we could ask, we can ask. Yeah. See, I, I, he was willing, he was willing to come in before. Um, and he did yep. say, he did offer it up and say anytime, you know, um, so maybe what we do is we revisit that with Richard and ask him when is a good time for him, depending on when our next, we could maybe work it in our next board meeting or the one after, um, that may be a possibility. So this is a short cycle since now we are going back to our normal third Monday of the month meeting schedule. So the next board meeting is actually going to feel like it's going to come really soon, at least for me. Um, it's going to be on March 15th. Um, but I'm happy to reach out to Richard this week and find out if he would be willing and able to give us a presentation via Zoom for the March 15 board meeting if you guys are open to that. Yeah, should I do that? Mm -hmm. okay. My last thing has two <laughs> <laughs> I think Nancy just stepped away for a second. Perfect. I think she got a phone call. Great. And if it's not the March meeting, maybe he can, he, you know, he'll hopefully have enough time if we schedule him for the April meeting. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take that phone call. That's okay. <laughs> um, so where are we? Um, we are talking about um, Richard Soros and, and I just offered to reach out to him to see if he might be able to give us a presentation on the state of the foundation investments at our next board meeting, uh, which is on March 15th. 
which is, um, you know, we're now reverting back to the uh, normal third Monday a month schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's not enough time for him um, to then invite him to do it in April. Okay, that sounds fine with me. How about everybody else? Okay with that? Super. Well, then let's move on. Julia, you wanted to tell us about Clem Albert. Yeah, I just thought I'd let you know I got the news. Um, on on Thursday last week. So Clem Albertoni, um, many of you might know who that is. He's been the heart and soul of cowboy poetry for I think the last 30 years. He passed away, I think last Wednesday due to complications with COVID. He was in and out of the hospital. And then on Thursday, that was his last day, unfortunately. And uh, so I was planning on sending a condolence card um, on behalf of the foundation, but in your board packet, if you would like to individually send um, sure. a card to his widow, I've included the address if you would like to do. Yeah, because yeah, we've worked with him for so long. You yeah. know? He was such a fixture of cowboy poetry, my goodness. <laughs> I can't even imagine how it's going to be now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody have anything they want to add to that item? Okay, then I think we have gotten to the end of our agenda unless we skipped over something that we need to go back to. Let me just make sure. Nope, I got little check marks on all of it. Excellent. Okay, well then I think the meeting is adjourned. And of course, if you want to stick around and socialize, that's fine. Otherwise, <laughs> we'll see you in mid-March on the Ides of March, huh? <laughs> Ides of March? Ooh, I think so. Yeah. I just saw your message, Kelly. Thank you. She just put in the chat that she is uh, going to make a donation in his name to the uh, foundation. So oh, very nice. that's really nice. And since I have you here, uh, you know, I just now got into uh, answering all, all my emails. Nancy, I need to set a, a, a Zoom meeting with you. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. So. Okay. And then Ron, I will see you tomorrow at 1.30 at the Buena Vista branch. That's it. I'll be there with bells on. <laughs> oh, I, uh, that. I appreciate I that. I will do the same. <laughs> you might want to put on a sweater too. <laughs> when I think we got a lot done uh, today. I'll, I will even comb my hair. Oh, <laughs> big event. Well, right, I think Nancy and I had fun. It, it was a really fun one when we did it in Marina. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep. So, and yeah, Kelly, um, if there's a specific day that, that is good for you or timing, I can only come in the afternoon simply because I got I got kindergarten duties in the morning. Okay, I'll send you an email about which, which are the best afternoons. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us, Courtney and Kelly and everybody. Bye. Take care, Courtney. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can just chat later, but I just thought if you could hear me, I'd say hi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, that was a good meeting. I'm so it definitely, Yeah, I agree. I'm going to make sure I'll get everything typed up and ready to go. And I guess we've got some brainstorming to do on how we phrase this question. Yeah, yeah. But I'm cool. excited that we're going to have some forward movement. So that's really good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, awesome. we're off to meet. Bye. <laughs>